Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the second of three videos that show you how to build a unique navigation system in SwiftUI that uses a floating button that expands out when tapped. If you haven't already watched the first video, please go back and follow along. If not, I have a link in the project notes for a starter project that starts right here. In the previous video, we created our main menu, or our selected menu button. Now it's time to build our other menus and spread them out when the button is tapped. Now each item is going to have its own color and its own SF symbol and its own view associated with it. Only one of them will be the selected one. So let's create a model for this menu item and then we can create an array of these items. So we'll start by creating a new file called menu item. And within that file, we'll create a struct called menu item. Now this struct is going to have five properties. However, since we're dealing with types like colors and views, we're going to have to specify SwiftUI. So we'll import SwiftUI instead of foundation. Our first property will be a unique ID, as we need to identify which menu item will be tapped. The next three properties are fixed and assigned when the menus are created. So we'll just use let. These are for color, which is a color view, icon, which is a string representing the name of the SF symbol, and menu view. Now the menu view is a view that will be presented in the background when the menu is selected. Since this can be any kind of view, we will have to make sure we specify this as any view. And the final property is a Boolean selected and it will change based on the menu button that's selected, so it has to be a var. Now I'm going to be using a view model to manage my menus. Within that view model, I'll be able to define all of my menus and have a computed property that will be determined by which one has been marked as being selected. So I'll create a new file called menu view model. And again, let's change it from importing foundation to importing SwiftUI. And inside that file, we'll create a new class called MenuViewModel. Now what I can do is create an array of menu item called menus. So we're going to create five different menus. And we'll use a different color for each and use numbered circles as our SF symbols. And for our menu view, we'll just use a text view in all five cases and make the first one selected. So the first menu item will be red with the SF symbol named one.circle.fill. And the menu view will be the text view with the string first view. And it will be selected, so true. Now this gives an error because a text view is supposed to be any view. Well, no problem. We'll just wrap that in any view. So let's just copy and paste this four times, changing the color and the icon and text to represent four more different buttons and views. And each of these will mark selected as being false. Now we can create a computed property that will be the selected menu. And I can do this by filtering our array on selected and choosing the first one. Now there needs to be at least one. In fact, there needs to be exactly one and only one, so I'll do a guard check on that and report a fatal error if there isn't at least one. Otherwise, I'll return the one that is found. Now this gives us a warning on our filter function, advising us to wrap the body with parentheses. So let's just let Xcode fix that for me. I'll go back to menu button now and replace our selected menu button's fixed values with a menu item. So first we'll declare menu item as a menu item. And now we can replace our color and icon with the property values for menu item. So fill with menu item dot color and our image icon becomes menu item dot icon. This will, of course, break our content view because when we present the selected menu button, we're not initializing this menu item. 
What we can do is create an instance of our view model, and then our argument for a menu item will be our view model's selected menu. So we need to retrieve that from our view model, but this will change as our user taps on one of the menus. So before we create that instance of our view model, let's return to our view model file first and make sure that we can observe those changes. And we do this by making our view model an observable object. And then we need to publish our array of menus so that each time selected is changed on any one of them, it will notify any instance of the view model that is observing this change. So back now in content view, we'll create our instance as an observed object. And now that we have that instance, we have access to the selected menu property that we can use to initialize our selected menu button. If we resume our canvas now, we see the red selected number one button being displayed. Going into preview mode, we see that it still functions as designed. There is one thing I'm going to change though before I finish this video off. Notice when I tap the button, it drops back down again. And it looks okay on the iPhone 8 or the new SE, but not really on the iPhone 11. It goes down too far. And the way I solve this is by introducing a Y offset to our selected menu button when it's activated to bring it back up. I'm only going to bring it up by 10, but it's really important to test on all devices to make sure things look good. Now when we tap our button, we want to make sure that we fan out our menus that will be placed behind the selected one. So initially, all other remaining buttons are going to be placed directly behind this button, the selected button. The placement of these menus will depend on the number of menu items. Remember, we can have anywhere from two to five menus in this solution. Now I used Sketch to visually lay out how I thought the buttons should look when they're expanded. Now there's no specific reasoning here, I just use my eyes. I'm, I'm not a designer, and I'm sure that some of you may have a better idea, and even though I may have a degree in mathematics, I really didn't want to bother trying to figure out a formula that would work on this. So I just eyeballed it and came up with these offset values. The blue circle is the placement of my selected menu, and the red ones are the placement of all other menus when they get expanded. When the menu circles are initially laid out, they'll have that same offset of 0, minus 20, and they'll have a slightly smaller frame. But when the blue button is tapped, they'll fan out with the same spring animation to the layout that you'll see here. What we need to do is create a function that will return the x and y offset values corresponding to the index of the menu item in the menus array. And the items will always be laid out in a clockwise direction from 1 to 5 as indexed in our menus array. And that's what we'll do in the next video when we finish off this project. I have lots of other videos available and in the queue as well, so please check out the rest of my channel. You can also visit my website to see the apps that I have available on the App Store. And visit my GitHub page to see what I have available as public repositories. If you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And ring the bell to get notified when I post new videos. I'm most active on Twitter, so please follow me there as well to find out what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching.